Hi, this is Valerie with At My Home. About six weeks ago, we started testing the Food Marble Air, this digestive tracker that we found at CES. We discovered it downstairs in Eureka Park, and they were nice enough to give us one to take home so we could try it out. I've been using the Food Marble Air for about six weeks now, and logging my food, tracking my symptoms, and learning a lot about my digestion. So today I'm going to show you how that works. So I'm going to, I haven't actually logged my breakfast yet, so I'm going to go ahead and log it in the app so you can see how it works. So I've got right now a dashboard. It's pretty much I haven't logged anything today. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the plus key. I'm going to click on meal. And then I'm going to log my food. So today I had some egg bites. Uh, they're not in their database, but I'm going to go ahead and make my own meal here. So if I look up eggs, I click cooked eggs. It also has ham, has green pepper, cheddar cheese, and with my egg bites, I also had a cappuccino. There's a cappuccino. So I've got my meal that I've created here. So I just go ahead and click create meal and it will let me add a picture if I want. So I happen to have a picture of some egg bites. There they are. And I ate this about 11 o'clock this morning. I'll go ahead and put the time. And that's important because then it schedules the breaths accordingly. Go ahead and log my meal. And there it goes. So meal saved and reminder set. So I've got my meal logged in here. And um, I'm going to go ahead. It hasn't reminded me yet since I just logged it. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and take a breath so we can see how that meal impacted me. Here's a breath. So you need to turn your air on and hold it close to your phone. And you can see that it gets connected. That's warming up. And it's going. Now when you get ready to blow into the air, uh, they recommend that you hold it with the logo facing up and that you hold it straight ahead. And when you're ready, it prompts you. You start by taking a, a deep breath for about three seconds and then you blow subtly into the air for five seconds. All right, great. So I calculated my fermentation score and that is uh, low. So what does this mean? I can click on that and it'll give me a little bit more information about that the sensors are picking up low level of fermentation. And right now, if I'm having any kind of symptoms, I could tap right here to log anything. Uh, I'm not having anything right now, which is great. And then if I wanna log any other food or drinks that I've had, I could go ahead and add them here. Uh, you know what's nice is that it kind of took a little bit of time to go through and find the different uh, items that I've eaten. But after you start using the Food Marble Air for a little while, it will keep your frequent meals in here and also some recent meals. So if you eat things a lot of the time, obviously I eat a lot of egg bites. Um, you can go through and you can find them in the recent meals you've had or things that you eat frequently. And so after you're using it for a while, it gets a lot easier to log some of your common meals. You just click on them and then you add it here into the database. Uh, it just happened to give me this warning, and this is a good thing to talk about. Now, um, they give you a nice little case to keep your air in, but this is only really if you're taking it somewhere to put it in your purse or your bag. Um, normally, you should just go ahead and store it outside because the sensor needs to be kept dry. Um, if it gets a lot of condensation on it, and if you're taking a lot of breath tests, um, then you know it can get moist and you really want it to, to stay aired out in between breath tests. They also recommend that you um, that you uh, wait at least 30 minutes um, up to an hour in between different tests unless you're going to do a food challenge which I'll talk about later. Um, you might be wondering how you keep this little air device clean. What's really nice about it is that this little cover it comes off and you can wash this with soap and water so you can make sure to take care of it and make sure that you're not transmitting any germs to yourself. If you really want to share this device uh, amongst the users in your household you can clean it every time and Food Marble recommends that, that if you do that, you do need to create your own user in the app and you should clean it thoroughly every time. However, we'd recommend if you want to test it, you just really should get your own. Now that I've shown you one of the readings from one of my meals, that was a pretty low reading. So let me show you what it's like to get a high reading. Now, so this is uh, from uh, Tuesday, the 18th of February. And you can see by looking at this chart that I had a lot of high readings that day. So let me just pick one here. 
So if I click on that day, I can see all my ratings during the day. So you can see here, I had 3.6, and then I had a 10, then I had an 8.5. So let me click on this high reading and click more. So when you get a, a high reading like this, the Food Marble app gives you some really good information about what it means and what, I should, what you should do with the information. So it tells you basically what's going on. So really what's going on and what the air device is measuring is measuring the hydrogen levels in your breath. And this is an indication that you're having this high fermentation going on in your gut. Now this extra gas that you have can lead to some uncomfortable symptoms like bloating or stomach pain, things like that. And these are things that you can track right here in the app. Now, if you're not having any symptoms, it's really not something to be alarmed about. It's just good information for you to understand how your digestive system works. So beyond logging your food and then measuring your breath afterwards, uh, the Food Marble app allows you to keep track of different symptoms you're having and also how well you're sleeping and any stress that you might be having. So it's pretty easy to do that. You just click the plus button. You can log your sleep. So you can say, how well did I sleep? I slept great. Save that. Uh, it's, uh, if you're having any stressful symptoms, say how stressed are you? Are you really relaxed? Are you very stressed? I'd say, uh, you know, I'm probably a little bit stressed today since I'm doing a video. Uh, and uh, then you can also log different symptoms here. And this is important because this is how you track, um, you know, what things you're reacting to and how it causes you any kind of discomfort. So here you can say, you know, I'm having some bloating, I'm flushing. You know, I have abdominal pain, these kind of things. And if you don't see your symptom here, you can add your own symptom. Uh, and then you say exactly when the symptom occurs and you go ahead and log that and say done. And it will actually, well, I don't have any symptoms right now. So <laughs> I'm just going to click off on that. Um, and that's great because then you can really start to see over time how these different foods you're consuming, how they're making you feel. And that's really the most important thing you want to measure. So once you start using the Food Marble Air to track your meals and your symptoms, um, you can start to see how things, how trends impact you over time and, and how many different breaths you get and what kind of foods you eat. So I'm going to show you one particular day and kind of what I ate and it's kind of my readings here. So here's a, um, some readings for uh, Tuesday, eight, the 18th of February. And you can see here, if you look at the dashboard, I took a number of breaths that day. There were some medium, the one that was pretty high. And then you can see the different meals I had during the day. And then I did have some symptoms that day. It also keeps track of your stress and your sleep. So you can kind of see the different trends over time. Now, in addition to uh, your daily trends, you, you can look at trends over a certain number of weeks. So this is that same week, the week of uh, 16 Feb to 22 February. And you can see my minimum breath, my maximum breath, and my average breath readings for the day. You can see on the 16th I had a lot of really high readings uh, and you can kind of see how the trends are over time. So if you want to try to figure out what you had on those days and kind of what, what were your triggers, maybe you ate a lot of a certain food, maybe you didn't get a lot of sleep or you were really stressed out. So these are things that you can look at the trends here over time. During our test we also tried the Food, Map, food Marble FODMAP program. Now the FODMAP program are four different packets. They're different dietary sugars that people often have re reactions to. There's lactose, sorbitol, fructose, and inulin, which is a common carbohydrate. Food Marble recommends that you wait about two weeks after you've been using the app before you start doing the FODMAP challenges. Now it's important to plan so that you have enough time to do it correctly and you want to plan it for a day that you're going to be home because you're going to need about three hours in order to do the full test. Uh, it's important that you fast for at least 12 hours before you get started. And when you're ready, uh, it's also important that you brush your teeth before you get started because you want to make sure that there's nothing in there before you begin the test that would impact the challenge. Mm -hmm. Food Marble recommends that if you're a diabetic, you should not do the FODMAP challenges. You really shouldn't consume the sugar that's in those packets. So let me walk through and show you how the results we did from our four FODMAP challenges. So we did sorbitol, fructose, inulin, and lactose. And you can see all of our results right here. And then you can open them up to get a little bit more information. So you can see in, in our case, the four tests that I took, I had some issues with uh, sorbitol, fructose, and inulin. They all show red here. And then lactose, I got a result of zero. So that was, I had absolutely no problems um, digesting lactose, which was great. I didn't think I did, but I learned for sure. And if you, well, let's drill into fructose here. So um, the, I did this test a few weeks ago 
and there was a significant rise in the hydrogen levels during the f food challenge, and this means that the fructose was not absorbed well into my gut. So it has all the detail there, it has the different readings that I got during the day, and it shows exactly when I did it and when I completed it. And what's great is that after you do these challenges, uh, when you're looking for food in the database, you can see different foods, and if you click on, for ex example, if I click on an apple, it'll show me that it has a lot of fructose and sorbitol. So when I'm logging that, it will have a little red dot there, and it will give me a clue that I have some issues already digesting those things. I might want to watch out for that. What's really interesting about the challenges is that if you click here to learn more, it'll tell you um, some very common high fructose foods. So you can see what's in there, apples, pears, mangoes, those are all pretty high. It'll tell you some medium fructose fruits you can eat like blueberries, raspberries, strawberries, and low fructose fruits like bananas, blueberries, uh, kiwis. Now this is great since I love bananas. I don't want to stop eating them. You know, it's really interesting if you really want to dig deeper into foods that you think you might be having a problem with, you can do a custom challenge. And this is really great because you can just eat one particular food and then you can find out how your body reacts to it. So if you want to do this, you do it just like one of the other FODMAP challenges. Um, you have to make sure that you fast ahead of time and that you only have still water while you're doing the challenge. So when you're ready, you can click start now. You can search for the item that you want to find. So I'm going to look for apple. And it will tell me, you know, the test will last three hours, just like a regular challenge. And you consume your food item and then you take a breath reading every 15 minutes. So in this case, you really, if you're testing a particular food, you want to be pretty, um, pretty uh, careful about making sure you know how much you're consuming. And then you're, you're going to record your results over time. So and if you're going to do this with something like this, I recommend that you measure the weight of the food and so you can get a pretty accurate result. So something that I didn't notice until after a few weeks I've been using the food marble is that it's very common that if you have a glass of wine or a beer, the alcohol is going to give you a very high reading. And this is not only uh, going to make your results kind of skewed, it's also bad for the sensor and it could actually damage your food marble air and you want to be careful about breathing, taking the breath readings after you have alcohol. Uh, so um, after I saw this in the FAQ, I thought, hmm, well, sometimes I have a glass of wine with dinner, and is that really impacting my reading? So I wanted to learn more about it. So I reached out to the Food Marble Support, and I learned a lot about alcohol and uh, how I should log it. So this is kind of a typical, for me, glass of wine. It's about 250 milliliters. Uh, a bottle of wine, by the way, is about 750 milliliters. So uh, this is kind of a typical glass of wine I might have with a meal. And um, what the Food Marble Support told me is that if you, for every one unit of alcohol, you should wait at least an hour before you do a breath reading to make sure that it doesn't skew the results and doesn't damage the sensor. So for me, this might be one unit of alcohol, but he gave me a handy chart uh, to show me exactly what the units are here. So uh, this is a 250 milliliter glass of wine. And uh, according to this chart, I happen to look at the bottle of wine and it's 15% ABV. So this is really about three and a half or so units of alcohol. So um, what I decided is I'm just probably not going to take breath readings if I have a glass of wine with dinner because I don't want to ruin my uh, monitor and I don't really want to skew my results. And it's probably not going to impact, um, really impact my results anyway. <laughs> so we've really enjoyed using the food marble and learning more about our digestion. This is a really great device and it can provide you with a lot of interesting data, but we're not medical professionals. So this is not something you're going to use to diagnose yourself. If you're really having medical issues, we suggest that you talk to your doctor. And if you are going to use the food marble, make sure that you use it consistently. Uh, with any kind of data tracking device, it's really only as good as the data you put in. So if you really want to understand your food and your symptoms and how it's impacting you, it's something that you're going to have to use every day and make sure that you're taking a number of breath readings so you can really get an analysis of how the food's impacting you. If you do get a food marble air for yourself, please let us know in the comments because we'd love to hear from you and hear how it's working for you. You can also visit the At My Home Facebook page and join the conversation there. Thanks for watching our video today. If you liked our video and you want to see more, please take a moment now to subscribe to our channel. And for more smart home and smart kitchen stories, please visit appmyhome.com. Thank you.